This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare to you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is. How? That Jesus died by our sins according to Scripture. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the Scripture. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, recovering the sight to the blind, set at liberty them that are bruised. The word is not thee, even in your heart and in your mouth. It is the word of faith which I preach. If you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth Confession is made unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is a power of God unto salvation. Everyone who believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. I want to welcome everyone to this broadcast, wherever you're at. This broadcast will be could be coming to your house through short wave, or it could be live stream, or Roku, or other devices. I want to welcome all of you. We have a wonderful program tonight. God's servants ministered in word and song and power. First, we're going to have the. Uh, <clears throat> Good Lord, Water of Life Quartet and Washed in the Blood. Second, we'll have the Brown Brothers with Sojourner. And I'm going to have a seat. Here's a quartet. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed, Are you washed in the blood, in the blood, in the soul-pinching blood of the Lamb? Are you God? Spotless are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? In the blood, in the soul, pending blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul of Will your robes be white and be white? 
washed in the blood of the Lamb. Will your soul be ready for the mansion's right and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed, Are you washed in, the blood, in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed?
and grew up under all of them. Since there were two or three, one or two, what a blessing. You don't know how it warms my heart. Well, you don't. Could you believe that I could have a warm heart? That's William Mortardo. Is that right? That's correct. That's me. I got you today, old buddy. <laughs> Good friend. It's a great blessing to do what I do. When I was about 40 years old. 40 years old. I was being led by the Lord into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Luke 4, 1 through whatever. Matthew 4, same thing. I've never known another person in the body of Christ that's been put through what I've been put through as Jesus was put through. I never met one. Most of them I knew got my Bible and started banging it and preaching. I spent seven years being trained, tempted of the devil, trained in the wilderness. I went through things that were embarrassing, things that hurt my feelings. I was in California once, Anaheim. At the Marriott speaking, there was a woman, woman sitting there in front of me. I said, you people almost uh, hurt my feelings. She said, not yours. I thought, you're right. I couldn't afford it. I couldn't afford to wimp, cry, go hide under a rock. I couldn't afford to get angry, although I have, and got kicked off of television for being angry. One woman said, I had a fighting spirit, and I need to be off of TV. And she and 11 other women were praying to get me off. She died. But I was greatly disturbed. I was embarrassed. I was a prideful, actually probably 40, probably 41, maybe 42. Strong. I'm as strong today as I was then. For war. But I wasn't used to God's dealing with my life. It required me to required me to sell 121 veterinary hospital, a state of the art facility. It required me to sell it. And I was 37. I actually knew it was coming, but I still didn't want to do it. It didn't make it easy. So now, I'm probably 41, and God is really leading me through things that I thought were born to a Christian. I've been born again since I was about six, just before I was six. One day, in my frustration, in my frustration, you don't know what pressure is, folks. How about 45 years of it?
in my frustration, I let my tongue get out of my mouth. Just Katie? Yes. Thank you. I said, Lord, you are the you are destroying my reputation. You can say what you want, but I had a good one. Among colleagues and the community. I didn't say I deserved it. I said I had a good one. And I was frustrated. And I said, you're destroying my reputation. Jehovah knows how to humble you. He knows how to humble you. Did he? Oh, right here. Right here. Who is this? Lark. Who? Lark. Oh, Lark. Now shake your head. And he said, what reputation? I knew when God asked a question like that, I could be in trouble. You see, I'd been obeying him. And I knew what he required. And one was keep your mouth shut. And that wasn't easy when you're frustrated. I said, what reputation? And oh, did I feel terrible. Did he? Yes. He said, my son hung on the cross naked. Yeah. You see, I'm not without pride, not without some sense, not without some, oh, Modesty, I guess you'd call it. Not without the ability to think what would it be like hanging naked for the world. I suddenly thought my reputation doesn't mount to anything. An innocent man, a man without sin, and they strung him up, every bone out of joint. He had no form nor godliness. You find that in Isaiah 53. And there was no beauty that you would want to look at him. You could not tell he was a man marred more than any man And naked, and his genitals were exposed. I was greatly humbled, greatly humbled. I felt terrible. And I was 
say God and destroyed my reputation. If you think it's easy to be naked, I wouldn't recommend it if I were you, unless you want to get in bed with somebody. And I wouldn't recommend that either. You commit adultery, oral sex, Sodomy. I wouldn't recommend any of those. I recommend you believe the gospel. The death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. That's what I preach. That's what I teach. So, I know that we have a lot of Old Testament people watching this, listening to this, so I'm not going to take you. I'm not going to take you to New Testament. I'm going to take you to the book of Genesis. To Adam and Eve. You there, Katie? I'm way out here. I'm out on they nice. But I'm doing well backing up. For those of you that wonder about me, well, don't wonder. I'm well. The book of Genesis, Adam and Eve had disobeyed God. Have you ever disobeyed God? Have you ever had God tell you something and you disobey it? Have you ever told, had God tell you what you were and then you didn't want to be that? So, you rebelled, did your own thing. Any of you ever done that? Huh? Maybe I should ask this, are you doing it now? So, hello, is that internet? Pam. Oh, Pam, well, thank you. When you get a CPA, correct you. <laughs> Good Lord, I'm lost. I need to go forward. I need to go forward and left. Forward and left? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. See, I'll take direction from anyone. That's not nice, Doyle. I take direction. I take help. Now can I, may I back up? Katie, come get me. I sure will. Thank you. <laughs> Not more okay now. Oh, yeah. Now you're even with me. <laughs> even or eating. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go to the book of Genesis. What do you say? All right. I'm going to read... From chapter 3, verse 7. Right. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Well, why were their eyes open? Don't you think we should back up sure. to chapter 2? This is, this is a gospel preacher. Shall I start 3, verse 1? Or to do you want me to start... Well, where is Satan, uh, the devil, talked to Eve? Okay, chapter 3, verse 1. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. 
And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and that a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also under her husband with her, with her and he did eat. And the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Is that not amazing? They sewed fig leaves together because they had sinned. Their eyes were open. Now they knew they were naked. You notice how embarrassing that was to Adam and Eve. As you know, Jesus hung on that tree for you and me naked. Do you know that? Would that hurt your reputation? Have you ever thought about this man being hated, rejected, despised, oppressed of men? This man, Jesus, that I serve, obey him. Have you ever thought about what his reputation was like. They mocked him. Incredible. He had no form, no godliness. He didn't look like a man. And they wondered, what's this on the cross? He, put, he was put there for me, for my sin. And you, that's what sins will do. Sin killed him. But he didn't give up the ghost until he was ready. He performed all the commandments that the Father told him to perform. And then he said, it's finished. And he gave up the ghost. Incredible. Well, this man, Jesus. Oh, you like to call him Big Brother? You silly thing. I tell you, you need to fall at his feet as I have and do. Say, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Like Peter did in the fifth chapter of the book of Luke when Jesus told him, cast your that's right there. Peter said, Lord, our master, we've toiled all night. Nevertheless, nevertheless, at thy word, he did, and the boats were filled with fishes. And Peter dropped to his knees, and he said, O oh Lord, depart from me. I'm a sinful man. A sinful man. This man took my place in humiliation. Well, I've been humiliated by God's people. Would you turn to Acts 8, Kitty? I've got it already. You got it. I knew you would. Would you read this? I sure will. I'm going to begin in verse 32. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation, for his life is taken from the earth. It's amazing, huh? Now, there was a eunuch in this chariot, and God sent Philip down, told him to join himself to him. And I believe Philip said, understand what thou readest. Uh, is that right? That's right. And the eunuch said, how can I? Unless some man tell me. And Philip, an evangelist by the Spirit of God, started reading the book of Isaiah, chapter 53. 
Oh, my folks, my friends, Jesus was humiliated. Yet, he was not guilty. Did you know I've been humiliated? Did you know that? And didn't even know what was going on? by other people's sins. Jesus humiliated because of our sins. Sins will humiliate you. My friends, God took him out in his humiliation. Thank God. And he went to hell. He went to hell where all the wrath and terrors of God are present. He went to the lowest pit. The lowest pit where the worm died not and the fire is not quenched. That's where he went. You don't want to go there. You can scoff at me, laugh at me. One night I was preaching on TV and some arrogant sucker, big guy, stood up and said, that's not true. And the fire of God knocked him in the chair. He called up and said, tell Brother Doyle he's got power. One night, one afternoon, a young man came to this ministry outside. Terry Byer was here. And Terry met him out front. This young man told Terry, he said, uh, I'm, a, I'm afraid, I'm scared of that guy in there. I'm scared of him, and I'm not scared of you. Yeah, he said right up in Jerry's face, he said, I'm not afraid of you, but I'm afraid of that one. You know who that one was? Me. You know, Terry should have listened. That somebody, somebody in this ministry, the devil was scared of him, but he wasn't afraid of Terry. Did you know the devil's not afraid of you? He's still afraid of me. But I'm not arrogant. No, I'm not arrogant. I humble myself. Yesterday I was praying. At times it was tough. Extremely tough. Hard. And I got on my face. I got on my face and I started praying. Lord, you grant grace to the humble and you resist the pride. Pride. You grant grace to the humble. You resist the pride. You grant grace to the humble. You resist the pride. Humble myself, therefore, under the hand of Almighty God. And in due time, you will exalt me. I cast all my cares upon the Lord, for he cared for me. That went on for, oh, maybe 15 minutes. Did you know, grace Begin to flow. Grace begin to flow. The heavy burden started lifting. It started lifting. Oh, it was tremendous. 
a burden of the devil. Not God. Did you know in the past that's chosen by God, the chosen past, Isaiah 58? Did you know one of the first things, if not the first, that past is to loose bands of wickedness? Loose bands of wickedness from whom you. You want to know another one? Remove heavy burdens. Let the oppressed go free. Destroy every yoke. That's the past that's accepted by God. I have to be fasting. Yesterday, today, Monday. And I was on my face. And God moved. God moved. Thank God. It wasn't too long. It was sometime after 3 p.m. I was in a home and asked the lady to play the piano. Thank God, after 20 or 30 minutes of anointing play, along with prayer, things had lifted to where it was not too bad. I just want to tell some of you, you might be a follower of me as I am also of Jesus Christ. We got a song that my my brother and co-host Monday through Friday broadcast morning 11 Paul Peters Jesus paid it all. Savior say thy strength in need is small child of weakness watch and pray find in me thine all and all Lord now indeed I
distant white as Thank you. If you will turn with me to Romans 10, chapter 10. I'm going to read verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. This goes right along with what Dor was just talking. Let's read that again. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now, turn the page over or go down to verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. You know, if you look up that word in Strong's, it means to save. It means to keep safe and sound. It means to rescue from danger or destruction. The Greek word is sozo. Sozo. S-O-Z-O. Sozo. Now, turn with me to Luke 8, chapter 8. If thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, thou shalt be saved. If you call on the name of the Lord, thou shalt be saved. Uh, let's go to Luke 8. I'm going to begin in verse 26. This is about the Gadarene. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went to land, there met him, and when he went to land, that's Jesus. There met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time, and wore no clothes, neither abode in any house but in the tombs. And when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him with a loud voice, said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded, Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oftentimes it had caught him. And he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils are entered into him. Amen. Many devils are entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man. The devils went out of the man. Entered into the swine. And the herd went violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. And when they that fed them saw what was done, they fled. And went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done, and they came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed. Now the devils are departed. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed, and in his right mind, in his right mind, and they were afraid. Verse 36, and they also which saw it told them by what means he that was possessed of the devils was healed. He that was the possessed of the devils was healed. That word healed, the Greek word sozo. Amen. The Greek word sozo. So, being delivered from evil spirits is being saved. Do you see? Same word. Same as sozo means saved and it also means healed. Now, let's go a little bit further down the chapter, verse 41. And there came a man named Jairus, and he was the ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had only one daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a-dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. And a woman, having an issue of blood 12 years, which spent all of her living upon physicians, could, be, could not be healed by any came behind him, behind Jesus, and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stenched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude thronged thee, and pressed thee, and thou sayest, Who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody has touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. 
And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him, Jesus, before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. She touched him and was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. Guess what word means whole? Sozo. Saved. So now, if you are healed, you are being saved. So now salvation includes healing. Okay, let's keep going. Why yet spoke, there came one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble thou not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. She shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Jesus, or Peter, James, and John, and the father and mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. They laughed him to scorn, knowing she was dead. And he put them all out, and he took her by the hand, and he called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. Back in verse 50, when Jesus said, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. Guess what whole means? Sozo. The same word. Those that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be healed, shall be made whole. Do you see how far that word saved goes? Let's go to one more. Acts 27. 20. We'll go real quick. This is Paul, and he's on the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, how um, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. But after long abstinence, Peter stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sir, you should have hearkened unto me and have not loosed from Crete and have gained this harm and loss. Now go down to verse 27. But when the 14th night was come, they were driven up and down in the Hadria. About midnight, the shipmen deemed that they were near water of some country and sounded and found it 20 fathoms. Fathoms, And they had gone a little further. They sounded again, found it 15. Then fearing lest they should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. And the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship. And when they had let down the boat under the sea, under the color, as though they would have cast anchors out of the foreship. And Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. Saved. Sozo. Sozo. So when you call on the name of the Lord, you are not only to be born again, but you can call on the name of the Lord and be healed. You can call on the name of the Lord and be delivered. Someone can call on the name of the Lord and you can be raised from the dead. Someone can, you can call on the name of the Lord and if you are in peril, God will deliver you. Delivered Paul, delivered everybody of that ship and Paul called it being saved. He called it being saved. Amen. There is so much more to save than just being born again. It is any thing you need. You know, in James 1, 15, it says that if there are any sick, to call in the elders of the church, and they can anoint him with oil, pray over him, and he shall be saved. Guess what word that is? Sozo. Sozo. You can be saved. Healing is being saved. Now, how does that work? How does just calling on the name of the Lord work? Let's go back to Romans 10. We ended up, we uh, left Romans in verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's go on. How then shall they that call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As this is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. How does the name of Jesus work? It works through the gospel. And as Doyle ministered, it works because Jesus died 
on the cross and he carried your sin in his soul and on his body. He was marred more than any man. He carried your poverty on that body. He carried every sickness and disease on that body for you. He was your substitute. And then he died and he went to hell. And his body was put in the grave. He was a dead man. And he went to hell for us. But the third day, but the third day, the power of God raised him from the dead and made that body overcome every spirit, every disease, every sin. And we, because of that resurrection, are healed, justified, sanctified, made rich, made righteous, and born again. Jesus said, you must be born again. And how are you born again? I read it in the beginning. Those that call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's finish with the Water of Life boys with a song. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord, to the Lord. Give a joy and shout in the honor of the rock of our salvation. Come before him with thankful hearts. Let us sing him song.
trouble. Victory is here. Jesus Christ has risen. There is no need to fear. So run and not be weary. Walk and never faint. Lift up your voice to heaven and crown him Lord and King. It is finished. Christ is found. It was written of God's Son. For behold, the Lamb has fulfilled. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas, 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.